Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Launch Day Shorts podcast. I'm your host, Dean Svetkoski, aka Houdin. On today's show, we have a really special guest. He goes by the name of Chris Javeau. Chris, how are you going today? Good, thanks, mate. Great to catch up and see you again. Absolutely. It has been a little while, uh, you know, since we've last seen each other, definitely, um, you know, and I've been out hiding, right? Just, um, <laughs> you know, getting through the day to day and I, I haven't been ignoring you, mate. Look, I, I see all your posts. I like them. I share them. So absolutely, absolutely. Working on big things, it. man. Absolutely. Absolutely, dude. So listen, Christian, you, you uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is it Delta Tango Advisor? Is that, that's the business that you're operating? Yeah, that's the current venture. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you, do you want to run me through what, what is Delta Tango? Like what, what is it exactly that you do? Yeah, man. Um, so Delta Tango, um, basically we originated um, with a group of mates coming together who believed that we could do um, management consulting better. Um, we all had experience in sort of big four, defense, um, finance, big world like that. Uh, and we believed that we could do do it all better. So focus on our clients, making sure that you know, the, the um, biases of the big firms wasn't involved and we're actually able to deliver the best outcomes for them. Okay. Um, so, um, we started down in Canberra, a group of mates, um, and, uh, eventually I moved back to Sydney, um, and my roots are banking and finance and, um, executive search and recruitment consulting. Um, okay. so I brought that back here, diversifying the business outside of government defense. That will always be our, our roots. Um, but, uh, yeah, this, uh, getting into the big, big bright world of, uh, all the opportunities and possibilities. Yeah, lovely, man. And is it just so? Look, right now, is it just defence? I, I assume that's why you guys obviously set up in Canberra. Um, is that is that right? Or yeah, so um, I I moved down to Canberra back in 2019, um, and uh, basically for the opportunity to work with defence um, and work on some pretty cool projects in that space. Um, so national security and defence is sort of our bread and butter, um, but. Uh, yeah, really, really want to diversify and, and, you know, help more businesses and organizations in different ways. So um, moving back to Sydney has allowed us to do that. Um, my uh, main business partner, he's up in, in Brisbane, so um, he's he's keeping it real up there. But, um, yeah, Canberra is sort of where we all started and, and um, we've got a bit of a team across the country now. Yeah, I love it, man. That's brilliant. So you're going national. That's, that's yeah. really good. <laughs> Very good. And so is it just defense that you're you're working on or are you working with other enterprise and, and corporations as well? Or Yeah, so um, key clients are uh, defense, government, national security sort of focus. Um, we have also got defense industry clients, um, you know, working on uh, telecommunications and, um, you know, national infrastructure in that way as well. Um, and we've got some pretty interesting clients who do, um, you know, large events, uh, large productions, um, and you know the the sort of banking and finance background as well. So, yeah, mm. not, nice diverse client base and and a really cool team of um, you know experienced experienced team players who you know we all come together and bring our own different flavors to things and and make sure that you know clients are getting the best outcomes. Yeah, totally, man. It, look, is is management consulting something that people search for regularly online, and they're looking for for people like you online, <laughs> or you know, um, when does someone actually need management consulting? Yeah, it's it's funny you mentioned that. We we're um, sort of de into the Google trends the other day, it's trying to see how far down the list management consulting is, and yeah. um, I don't think it's necessarily something that a lot of people do. You know, go looking for um, a lot of businesses sort of go, look, I've got this problem, and you know, I. I don't have the resources in house or the specialization in that sort of skill set to be able to solve it. Um, so we find out a lot of our clients come through referrals for, um, you know, people are, are working with them and, and they sort of say, you know, these guys are able to help fix that problem. Um, so everything from, you know, how organizations are structured, who you've got, where, what they're doing, you know, how we can bring in different tools and systems to help people be more human and, and do less of the mundane tasks and mm. and really understand their processes to see where the efficiencies are. So that's sort of our, our core focus. Um, we've got some great program and project managers working with some big telecommunication clients to to help um, you know acquire and, and bring in new technologies and and new assets to deliver you know 
the communications that the nation needs. I get you, dude. So like the, the, the trouble for me that I'm trying to, I'm trying to connect the dots, right? So like, where <laughs> does, you know, at what point does someone in defense um, or an organization in defense need management consulting? So like, you know, can you give me like a, a use case, a scenario where that's something that's really required? Yeah. Um, yeah. Great, great point. Um, yeah. Back in the day, I, I was a army reservist and, you know, out there in the field, you don't, you don't imagine, you know, the big world beyond, you know, getting dirty and, and, uh, you know, having fun. Um, I know the, the feeling, mud. mate. I know uh, the feeling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there is um, obviously everything that the government um, is directing defence to do. There is uh, um, lots of capabilities and, and um, you know, directions from government that need to be put in place. And um, these things uh kind of specialized in their nature and and while defense has an amazing workforce um we like to i guess um combine with them and collaborate with them to to able to do those specializations so bring in that advice around um you know modeling out exactly what that asset needs to be um how can we best best achieve that capability and that effect that has been directed by government mm. um and working with those clients to to i guess um, bringing that special advice um, and work th through a, a set period. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of sort of body shops in there that are basically just pumping in people and um, doing contracting and everything. We like to be, um, you know, that specialist partner that brings in um, the key resources to, you know, model out exactly what this, you know, new submarine is going to cost, for example. Um, you mm. know, looking in the uh, cybersecurity space, bringing in that specialist knowledge of, you know, what the workforce needs, what sort of training needs to be done. Um, you know, what how the workflow we can... of that training looks like when they yeah. get access to, to this and when. 100%. You know, love yes. it. Dude. I love it. I love it. You know, like, are we talking, so you, are you doing stuff that's mission critical as well and, and working on, you know, what the, like, obviously the management side of things um, on, on anything that's mission critical or is it kind of more top level type stuff? Yeah, so we've got some teams delivering um, kind of mission critical assets, um, working with uh, various departments and and uh, groups to um, deliver you know the stuff that needs to be helping the warfighter. And at the end of the day, that's the focus is helping the warfighter. Um, there's a lot of noise and a lot of other stuff going on, but you know how does this help the warfighter achieve their their end goal? Um, you know the the world is a big big turbulent place at the moment and um, I guess that really needs to be the focus is you know how can we do this to achieve the best outcomes for you know the people that matter the people who are out there doing doing what needs yeah. to be done hey yes you I'm talking to you and I know it looks like the interview but it's actually not we're taking a really quick short break so that way you can hear me out I really want you to hear me out here if you are a business owner, you are building your personal brand. I mean, you could be anyone. You could be a real estate agent. You could be an astronaut, an IT professional. It really doesn't matter who you are and where you fit into the world. This interview is great for you. If you're really struggling to make content, and let's face it, right? When we get our phones out and we're like, you know, taking selfies and, and doing videos that way, uh, you know, it just comes across as inauthentic. And the other side of that as well is the fact that it's just so hard to come up with ideas of what kind of content to create. And this is where our interviews absolutely bring a powerhouse and an arsenal of, you know, a, a, basically a war chest in terms of your organic content marketing that you're creating. We create the TikToks and Reels for you. Here's the thing. I've got some great news. The great news is, is that this interview is completely free. We boost your SEO on Google because we go and feature these these videos like the one you're watching on YouTube. And not only that, but we also give you free content to post to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and all the rest of it as well. So if you haven't already, in the description down below is a link to Linktree where you'll see the opportunity for you to book your very own interview and get free content for your personal brand or your business as well. I'll see you on the other side of the screen. That's so interesting, dude, because, you know, you you kick things off in, where did you work prior to this? 
Uh, so I was at Deloitte prior to Delta Tango, um, yeah. prior to that, um, Gold Hirsch Consulting, Executive Search, and prior to that, I was in banking and finance, you know, big, big four bank for nearly eight years. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's interesting how you've gone. So it's an interesting sort of career path, isn't it? So we've gone Army Reserves and we've gone big four <laughs> banks. We've gone Deloitte, you know. What, what made it, like, was there any sort of influence from when you were in the reserves that kind of linked in with your, your experience with, with the big four and, and Deloitte where you kind of went, man, there's a real market here. Like, how, how did you come to the, to the conclusion that, you know, defense needed management consulting and it's something that you could offer to them? Yeah, I think um, it kind of all stems back, you know, when I was younger or I always had that affinity, um, you know, family members working with defense, um, yeah. you know, people serving, all that kind of thing. Um, and that sort of led me to the Army Reserves myself. Um, and then from there, I guess, uh, I I did various um, businesses and I sort of took those skill sets that I'd sort of learnt with the reserves and officer training through banking and finance, um, through my executive search recruitment consulting kind of business. Hmm. Um, and then um, wanted something with a bit more purpose, something that was doing something big for the nation and, and helping more, um, more purpose, more, you know, fulfillment. Um, and that's where I sort of landed in the defense consulting um, sort of management um, advisory space. And, and that's where I was at Deloitte. Um, and you know, that's, there's a huge market there and, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of projects that are ramping up and, um, you know, needing assistance. Um, and mm. I just felt that we could do it better than the big four consulting firms do. So that's what led to Delta Tango kicking off. Do you feel like, you know, cause it, it, I always find that it's always the case where the bigger the organization, the less agile they are. So like, mm. you know, the, the ability to move and be flexible or, or move quickly is just non-existent in those types of structures. Yeah, 100%. I feel like you know, you know, there's there's a, a significant advantage, I'd say, for defense to take on a management consultant firm like yours, because you have the ability to think quickly and and implement changes and be agile. Like, is do you think that's probably one of the benefits? Is is the agility, or is there more? You know, is is there more to it? Is it more structured? Where where are the main benefits for defense with you? Yeah, definitely. I think that agility, um, you know, the the closeness to, to the people making the decisions that want to help and support the client. Um, you know, some of the bigger firms are sort of found in bureaucracy and um, political processes within, and um, you know, they're they're sort of churning through their workforce. Whereas, you know, we bring together some amazing people with you know deep knowledge and experience over you know, fifteen twenty years in 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 the industry and um, you know, we're committed to helping our clients and, and focusing on their best outcomes, not our best outcomes. Mm. Um, you kind of see that conflict of interest that you know, everyone knows is there, but you know, it kind of gets glossed over. Um, and I believe that, you know, everyone that we've brought together really focuses on making sure the client gets the best outcomes. Yeah. I get you, dude. I get you. You know, it's got me curious too, right? Was there any sort of, um, <laughs> like I'm, all I can think of is is some of the acronyms that some of us used, you know, when when we were in defense, uh, you know, in in using in using the phonetic alphabet, you know, is de is there any sort of underlying meaning to to Delta Tango at all? Uh, yeah. So Delta Tango came about. Um, we were sort of, I think we were at the gym together and just sort of spitballing ideas and, um. Delta Tango, basically Delta is the symbol for change and, and Tango being the dance, um, like they they come from the phonetic alphabet. So they kind of sound, um, you know, relevant for our clients, but, mm. um, you know, it comes down to that, you know, dance with change, you know, really, you know, where we've got that, you know, I love that. Up, up on the balcony perspective of, of the tango and everything that's happening. Um, and we're also, you know, the Delta doing the tango, we're in there getting shit done for our clients, working with them, yeah, you know, that yeah. partner, that, that vivid, you know, romantic dance that is the tango. Um, and we really, you know, that sort of, it was at the gym, we we're kind of spitballing and it's really stuck and, and really evolved into something that, that resonates right. with our people and our clients. <laughs> That is brilliant, dude. Honestly, just like the, the 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 overall underlying meaning of it as well, and how it all sort of comes together, it reminds me of like a pet product that I brought to market. It was um, Boomerang. 
Yeah, it was awesome. like, you know, we, we, oh man, like it was started off with pet track, then it was this, then it was that. It was like I'm trying to come up with concepts for it. And then, you know, we got boomerang. We're like, yeah, because it's a little boomerang, like it's a little thing that goes in your collar. And the whole concept is that if your dog ever goes missing or your pet ever goes missing, it comes back like a boomerang, right? So, yeah, man. Um, you know, it's like, it's, it's a very interesting uh, concept to, to really understand the underlying meaning, honestly. Um, I thought when you said, oh, we're at the gym, I was, I was honestly thinking maybe a late night out and there was a fox <laughs> caught up and you decided to get that out, you know, but, <laughs> right. So yeah, that, but that's, that's so intriguing, man. And I like the idea that, you know, when it comes to, you know, again, you you got the Delta component, you got the tango part, you're doing the dance of change and that's, and it's, it is, it's not just that, you know, that management consulting, it's that, that change management as well. Mm. You know what I mean? And that trickles down all the way through uh, in, in every way and shape and form. And it's, you know, is that something where, you know, look, let, run me through the, the actual workflow and process of what you do. Again, is it, is it top level type stuff and then it trickles down or do you actually go and hold their hand through the whole process? Um, so every engagement's different. Um, you know, I've got some at the moment where, you know, we're, we're working with the overall strategy, coming in and, and reviewing all the processes, you know, all the, the workforce structures, um, you know, mapping out those stakeholder networks, um, doing some really cool stuff with network analysis and social networks as well. Um, mm. and you know, every, every engagement's different. So it might be that a uh, client has really figured out their strategy and, and really got things rolling, but they just need that extra bit of workforce to manage the project. Um, so we've got, you know, project managers that come in and, and manage, you know, through the stages, work with our clients to make sure that they're implementing, you know, agile or, um, you know, scrum ways of working or all, all that sort of stuff um, right through to um, we've got training designers who will work through and and design the training and and learning requirements mm. looking at pedagogical models and and how we can actually you know get the best out of people and and you know they're not doing those sort of corporate training that we've all seen where you just click 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 and get to the end and you know share the answers around the office it's actually you know how how is this going to engage and gamify and and work with with people to to actually learn and understand the risks and um, you know, be able to implement things rather than just sort of, um, you know, tick the boxes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, I guess we, we kind of span the whole scope. Um, I think, you know, our, our real niche is, is actually in the getting shit done. Um, you know, working with our clients, bringing in that extra, um, extra house and, and specialist knowledge to get, get through the process and make the business more efficient and more human and, and achieve the, the organizational goals. Yeah, that's brilliant, dude. That's really brilliant. I want to touch on the gamify, the gamification side of things, right? Cause you know, when I think of, you know, like I, I've, I've, I can't say, but I've got some experience. <laughs> um, you know, and let me tell you, gamification was never part of it, but I, for a few of my peers, Mm. Um, you know, in, in that time, where would gamif I mean, I feel like gamification would help them sort of set certain goals and, and look to achieve more. I mean, can we, can we sort of go into that a little bit more? You know, how do you guys implement gamification in defense, you know, if, of all places, right? Where you think it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's black and it's white. Right. And that's it. Uh, where does gamification fit into the equation? Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, from what I can share, um, yeah, we've done some real interesting work in modernizing um, and uh, you know enhancing the the training system within defense um, and other organizations too. But within defense, the there is um, you know quite a, a you know well thought out and structured way of of teaching and learning, um, mm. and you know it is very much competency based and and like this do that um you know demo go on um it's it's really you know you've done it yourself it, it's a great way of learning um but i guess where we we sort of look at e-learning and and you know enhanced learning um whether it be um you know that that sort of competence uh sort of compliance sort of training um you know your soft uh cyber security training all that sort of stuff how we can gamify that um 
we've done some really interesting work in uh, driver training reform as well, where we you know, broke it all down to make sure that uh, you know, the, the modules were focused on the learner and, and the student was actually getting their outcomes. Mm. And then how can we gamify that? You know, how can we build an a e-learning system um, where you know, you're, you're driving a truck and you know, next thing, kangaroos jumps out and you know, whatever it may be or, or looking at how we're loading this like gamifying you know where we put the load and how that truck then handles because we've put the load you know too far forward or too far back we haven't restrained it properly you know have we lashed it down um, all those things like how do we actually engage the learner and, and make it fun to to go through all this mandatory training that, and that's awesome right and you know, I, I remember always, right, going to the wets was always uh, a fun activity because, you know, anything to do with live rounds, oh, God, it was a, it was a headache to get approved, whatever mm. else. So the wets were just always a really – is that an example of, you know, gamification as well in, in terms of defense is, is introducing sort of training simulations as well? And yeah, it's, scoring based on that. Would you yeah, say de that? defense has a, a whole focus on simulations, and uh, again, some really cool work going on there that um, I guess kind of started with the wets, um, which was obviously risk mitigation and uh, cost reduction. Um, you know, the the wets has been an amazing innovation that has really opened defense up to to other simulations. Um, you know, taking that to the next level and and doing driver simulations. Um, you know, having um, you know trucks like simulated trucks in containers that you can kind of drive around bushmasters um, all of it are we talking yeah. the works or is it just mainly trucks or uh yeah you know the bushmasters you know the the protective mobility vehicles infantry fighting vehicles how do we you know get time on the wheel and understanding how these things work and operate without having to expend you know fuel ammunition you know and then saving that for when you know the the, the learners and and um, you know, soldiers are out there, you know, needing to actually implement this and getting mm. the best effect when they're, you know, out there in the field, getting cold, muddy, wet, hungry, and being able to get, get, get on with it and get shit done when they're there, because they've already ticked all the boxes for that, you know, formative yeah. stuff beforehand. Absolutely, man. And, you know, like even for me, you know, I know a couple of guys that were, you know, pretty nifty behind the computer in SIGs. And let me tell you, <laughs> you know, it was, it, I reckon if there was more gamification introduced for them, I, I one wholeheartedly would say, I reckon they would have actually performed a lot better in their, in their roles, especially when it came to training. Mm. And they just were completely unmotivated uh, because there wasn't a system in place to keep them on their toes. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Well, listen, yeah. Christian, what, what, what does the future of Delta Tango look like for you? Um, I guess, uh, you know, we're currently diversifying, um, you know, not just defense, looking at, um, you know, banking, finance, other corporates, telecommunication, um, where we've got some real niche skills and experience. Mm. Um, so, you know, continuing to grow, um, you know, working with new clients, being able to implement and, and you know, get shit done for different industries and organizations that, that we're really passionate about. Um, so, yeah, I think it's an exciting future. Um, some cool, cool new tech, which is augmenting our capabilities, and um, we're excited to see all the changes coming. That's awesome, man. Really brilliant. Mate, you know, and look, for those that are watching, how, how can they find you? How can they get in touch? Yeah, um, so they can jump on our website. It's probably the easiest way, deltatangoadvisory.com. Um, jump on LinkedIn, um, pretty easy to find, Delta Tango Advisory. You can look me up, Chris Javo, um, Christian Javo. Um, uh, reach out, send us an email. I think all our contact details are on there on the website. Um, or, yeah, reach out to, to Dean, and I'm sure he'll pass on my details. That's right. So guys, if you do need to, if you do want to get in touch, by all means, you know, reach out to us as well, support at launchday.au and we'll be very, very happy to put you in touch and, and connect you guys up. Absolutely. Christian, thank you so much for your time today, dude. It was awesome. Yeah. It was really insightful. Thanks, Dean. Really good to catch up and yeah, appreciate your time. Likewise, legend. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.